In this video, we're going to be discussing the good old Caterpillar 3406B engine. Ah, the 1980s. The U.S. has a celebrity president. A young man named Josh terrorizes his family. And Caterpillar is pumping out new 3406Bs. This is Josh for the Adept Ape channel, and you might be wondering, why am I making another video on a over 20-year-old engine that Caterpillar used to produce? Because I get a lot of questions about them. And there's not a lot of information online about them. I know because I tried to research a lot of it online, at least the history portion, and couldn't find much other than what Caterpillar has. So I tried to compile some information and give you all the info I know on the 3406B Caterpillar engine. So what's there to know about the CAT 3406B engine? Well, it's the base that turned into the 3406C and then turned into the 3406E, which most people know, which then became the C15 and then the C15A cert and then finally stopped production in 2010. But the base engine, the 3406B, was the precursor to the electronic engine versions that most people know and most people like. So let's delve into some of the specifics on the CAT 3406B. Now I'm not sure what the last model CAT truck engine that's still on the road will be down the road, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a 3406B. These are basically your zombie apocalypse proof diesel engines they will just keep running and running and running um we have two of them in the shop right now i mean they haven't produced these in well over 20 years and yet lots of guys still have them so the cat 3406b was an 893 cubic inch 14.6 liter inline six diesel engine it was made from the mid 1980s and the last production I can find on it was late 1995, in which case it was getting replaced by the 3406C, which used mostly the same mechanical components, but had an electronic ECM. It had some electronic controls, but it still used a high-pressure fuel pump. The 3406B is a strictly mechanical 3406. It does not have an ECM. There are no temperature sensors to the ECM because there isn't one. And all of the fuel timing and fuel management is strictly mechanical because it uses a high pressure fuel pump. Now, CAT lists quite a few serial number designations for the 3406B, but many of them didn't have much of a production run. If you own a truck engine with one, it's going to have these serial number prefixes. You'd have a 2EK, a 3ZJ, a 4CK, a 4MG, a 5KJ, a 5YG, a 7FB, and an 8TC. The 4MG seemed to have the longest production run and the most engines produced of it. These could be had from about 300 horsepower, maybe a little less, up to about 450 horsepower. And they made max horsepower around 1800 RPM and max torque around 1200 RPM. Very similar to the later module E models. So let me tell you about the basics of the engine. I already stated it's an inline six diesel engine. It uses a high pressure fuel pump as a single oil filter. It has an engine mounted secondary fuel filter. It could be had, depending on chassis, with a primary fuel water separator, but CAT didn't produce that. That would have been the chassis manufacturer, i.e. Peterbilt or Kenworth. It used a in block push rod design valve train so opposed to the c15s in the later engines which use an overhead cam design the camshaft in this one was in the block it then had roller lifters that ran push rods to rocker arms and it had two intake two exhaust valves the settings for the intake and exhaust valves were 15 thousandths for the intake and 30 thousandths for the exhaust that number did not change throughout the entire c15 production run most of these engines also had jake brakes. 
And the Jakes are a lot more complicated on these engines because there are no electronic controls. And setting them can be more of a pain because it takes specialty feeler gauges to run them. And based on what model of Jake you had, you could have, if you had a 346B model, you'd have a 70 thousandths gap. If you had a 346C, that'd be an 80 thousandths. Or if you had a 346D, this is the Jacobs model, not the engine model. 346D, you'd have a 0.067 thousandths feeler gauge required. But those are more of a forked feeler gauge, it's not a normal feeler gauge. You could use two though, theoretically, and it would still work. The maintenance interval recommendations from CAT on this engine were 12,500 miles or 250 hours between each oil change. Also, the overhead adjustment is supposed to be done every 250,000 miles or every 5,000 hours. Now, these engines used a three piston ring design piston. They had removable wet liners, similar to the later model ones. They had a spacer plate between the deck and the head, which required a spacer plate shim and then obviously the head gasket. They had a gear-driven water pump. They had a gear-driven oil pump. They had an aluminum oil pan, but it had a block strengthener plate, which had to be bolted between the oil pan and the block. And it basically used two oil pan gaskets because you needed an oil pan gasket between the block strengthener plate and the oil pan. Also, that's a huge potential for leaks because the seals they use for the oil pan and the block strengthener plate are what I like to call a puzzle gasket. You will get your oil pan gasket, which of course your oil pan is very long, the length of the engine, and the gasket's going to come in a box about this big. And it's going to be in about 20 pieces, and you have to puzzle them together. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Other features of the engine. They used a single nozzle oil cooling jet for the pistons and later in the production life on the E models they went to a dual nozzle oil cooling jet but these had bolt-in cooling jets similar to the later models. They used a single fuel nozzle that are fairly cheap they're only about a hundred dollars opposed to the later electronic injectors on the E models which could run you about six hundred dollars each. These used high pressure nozzle. Now these engines are typically easier starting than the E models just because the high pressure pump, if you crank it, usually it'll fire right off. It's not waiting for pressure to build and the injector and the camshaft to rotate and the ECM to fire it. Usually they'll light right off. A lot of the older style high pressure pumps were like that. They will start typically easier. Also, these can run a million miles between rebuilds and the rebuilds are not fairly difficult because they have wet liners, unlike some of the smaller diesel engines. So they can be rebuilt several times without typically a problem. Now let's get into some of the design. I don't want to say flaws, but some of the things that go wrong on this engine that can cost you some money. So let's talk about some of the problems with this engine. First thing would be not really a problem with the engine, but getting it worked on by an experienced mechanic that's used to this fuel system, the governor, the timing advance, those guys are kind of hard to find because if you think about it, anyone that was wrenching in the mid 80s to early 90s is probably going to be in their 50s by now. And the guys that are really experienced on those were when the trucks were new and the engines were new and they were in a lot of trucks. But a lot of the newer guys are not going to be as experienced with working on these. So if you know a good guy that's good with these pumps and you own one of these, you might want to know where he is because he can save you a lot of hassle if he knows what he's doing on these pumps. Now let's get into some of the engine design itself that can give you some problems. And the first one we're going to be discussing is oil leaks. This is a leaky oil engine. I already talked about the oil pan design, having the puzzle gasket and having the block strengthener plate that also uses a puzzle gasket between the block and the pan that's a potential for leaks the front structure is a leaky design it uses a backing plate and a timing gear cover those are usually leaking the rear structure is usually leaking the fuel pump itself has oil that goes through it there'll usually be a couple leaks on there also 
The cylinder head to cylinder block design is the same as the E models and it uses a spacer plate. And a lot of those leak. Similar to the E models, those leak as well. But the B's being an older engine, typically you'll find them leaking. Anyways, it's very rare to see one of these that isn't leaking. So that's a big problem with these. Now, another big problem with these, this is a 3406. Just like the E models, they have a liner design that sits on top of the cylinder block, not recessed inside. And what can happen is something called your liner protrusion can get off because the liner, since it sits on top of the deck, over time will wear into your cylinder block on top and the liner can actually sink a little bit. Not a ton, we're talking a few thousands here, but it's usually enough to blow out your head gasket. If your head gasket blows, it's very likely your liner is sunk. And the fix for this is not cheap. It's something called counterbore cutting. I have a video on this as well, where you have to measure your liner projection, and then you have to cut your counterbores. It takes some specialty tooling, and it's fairly expensive, because obviously the cylinder head has to be removed, and the cylinder pack has to be removed. Another problem with these engines, it's not really a problem, it's just the nature of the engine, is black exhaust smoke. These are a strictly mechanical engine. And if these aren't putting out a little bit, at least, of black smoke, typically, they're not running. These engines, just due to the fact that they use a mechanical fuel pump and nozzles, they'll typically blow a little black smoke, which, depending on what part of the country you're in, might not be a problem. So other problems with them, pretty much the same ones that you're going to run into on a 3406E. Uh, the exhaust manifold studs can break. The bolts going through the thermostat housing into the head, since the thermostat housing is aluminum, if they've never been removed, there's a high likelihood they have seized in the housing and it might cost you a new housing. Or the bolts can break off in the head. That can be a bad news, but Typically, you can get them out without having to remove the cylinder head. The water pump is very similar as to the E models. It's a gear-driven design. The oil pump is pretty robust. Don't usually have any problems with that. Now, that's about all there is to say on these engines as far as an overview on them. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.